Look right. This is what? So this is here. This is here. This is under. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is your number one. Yeah, sit down this way. No, either way, JJ. His left, if he's left underhook, his left leg is going to step forward. escaping from it, right? So in any in any kind of lock where we have the neck up like this, the main the key thing is this, we want to avoid wrestling back with the neck. The natural reflex when we get in it is that we try to look up with the eyes. Even if I go to bridge, it's a good idea, but if I bridge from the neck first and I try to resist and Jordy's putting a good crank on, Jordy's going to get the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's got me sideways and I try to resist with the neck. What happens at a subconscious level, whether or not he's wanting to be malicious, he feels the resistance, he immediately adapts and puts more pressure, and you don't have more to go. Most people crank it hard all the time, don't worry. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I resisted, you heard his feet switch, right, boom, and he cranks, he braces in. So what I want to do when he's getting, I'm going to let him get me right to the max. I don't want to resist upward with my head this way. I want to brace it in. So anything I can do with my arm, my shoulder here, to make this area tighter is gonna help. And then it's almost like I'm trapping his, his chin, his hand under my chin. I'm gonna bridge from the feet and all of me lifts up, right? Always, always. So if he's got my neck and he's choking, it's the same thing, all of me lifts up. So now I have power, but my neck is collar. It wouldn't change if he had me in, let's say, go under here, Jordy, do a half, no, no uh, under my pit. Yeah, if Jordy had me here. A reverse stockade, very hard hold, right? If I resist with my head, <laughs> that's it right away. Do it harder now. Yep, yeah, so I'm gonna chin strap. My chin goes down to my chest. Let's come in and I bridge up, right? So the power is really good. And then from there, you can start to look at reversals and getting on top. So the whole idea is that any of those positions, never here. I wanna have it braced and as one unit I go forward. But if I make even the smallest twitch of error, then what happens is everything uh, sort of starts falling apart. So super important you do it slowly, you want your neurons to fire correctly, right? As soon as you start extending from the neck first, you're gonna tear yourself and then the rest is just assisted tear, right? Nice and slow. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. Okay guys, there you have it. That was the ICSA level six requirement for the grappling module. Our restraint and control on the ground and our escaping neck locks. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to get your mat time in. There is no shortcut. As a long time security and law enforcement trainer, I can tell you that this kind of block and silo 25 hour introduction course and then two hour refresher every year or two is not gonna cut it, not even close. I would even go so far as to say it's gonna make you more vulnerable and put you in more danger by giving you a false sense of confidence. You gotta get in there, you gotta wrestle regularly, you gotta find a way. If you are in a solo environment, that means you can start at the very least by maintaining your skill and your mobility with a fitness mobility routine. routine. All of the material you've seen in the first six levels are ideal for this, any of it. Find what works for you, make your own routine. We'll be talking about this in our level seven uh, teaching and training module. Beyond that, 
See if you can work with some level of resistance. If you can at least get a mannequin or a punching bag that you use for natural weight, medicine balls, kettlebells, ideally a life partner. Even if it's only occasional, volunteer to teach, share, start it up in your basement, in your garage, give courses, whatever it is you can do, find a way. Go into a safe gym. When going into other gyms, whether it's BJJ or Sambo or wrestling, make sure the environment is safe. It doesn't matter what the reputation is, how great or famous the instructor is, how big it is or how successful it is. It needs to be safe because if you're getting injured on the mat, you're not going to evolve. You're not going to progress if you're always getting delayed with injuries. So be smart, trust yourself, keep it safe. And if you can't find the environment you want, you might need to make it yourself. Case in point here. So all that being said, find no excuse not to move, not to get on the mat, not to find that time. You need to have that pressure testing on the mat. Beyond all of that, make sure that anything you're going to learn to do, learn to undo. One of the reasons that we put this escape from neck lock module in there is because we are heavy on neck lock control. And the better we understand it, the more able we will be to shut it down, to intercept the intense and the, 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 the strategies and the movements of our, of our subject or of our opponent. Moreover, if you're going to use it, you should know how to escape from it at least to some level. As always, guys, I invite and welcome your questions on absolutely anything. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed the material. And until next time, I'll see you on the mat.